Hi Capricorn, welcome to your weekly read for money and career. This is going to be for the week of October 30th. I hope all of you are doing well. I cannot believe we're almost at the end of this year. Oh my God. This year has just gone by too fast, too quick. Um, but I'm also quite looking forward to 2024. If I'm being honest, um, it was a very difficult year, 2023 personally for me. So um, cannot wait to have a shift in the energies and looking forward to 2024. But let me know how your year has been. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. I read all my comments. It helps me connect with your energy as well. It helps me know that my readings are connecting with my viewers. Okay, I'm going to do um, a Celtic cross for you today. It's um, obviously one of the most exhaustive tarot spreads out there. Uh, I just felt like doing that today. So let's see. Past, present, future. So in the past, we've got the two of pentacles. Okay, I might need to push this down. In the present, you have the nine of pentacles. Very nice. What's coming in in the near future for you is the high priestess. Yep, trusting that gut instinct of yours. What's the current challenge around you? Uh, the eight of pentacles. Okay, clearly, I'm glad we're doing a money and career reading because the challenge seems to be around work. Uh, what's hidden from you right now. Okay, a seven of pentacles. You've got a lot of pentacles showing up. So in fact, uh, except for the high priestess, which is a major arcana card, all the other cards are pentacles. Um, so it shows that you're thinking a lot about your tactile, practical resources, money, energy, resources, time, all of that. What are your strengths at this time, Capricorn? Your strengths are, oh, I love this for you, the chariot. The chariot follows the star, so you're following your destiny, you're following what you're getting called to do, and your environment is, I love it. In your environment is the 10 of pentacles, like, are you kidding me? Happiness, abundance, basically the most abundant card um, when it comes to your money and career. At least I read the 10 of pentacles as the most abundant card. Let's look at your hopes and wishes. The magician, of course, because you've been manifesting. What is the likely outcome? I'm going to put this here because I first want to see what is the potential outcome. What's the potential outcome? Oh my God, you've got the Ace of Wands in your potential outcome and the likely outcome is the Page of Wands. So connected are we. Let's place it over here. What's bringing you to this reading today? The Moon. Okay, so some kind of fears, some kind of, um, you know, really like not sure. Maybe Moon is also about connecting with your intuition. So it can be a really powerful energy to uh, work with. It's basically about connecting to all the things that either scare us, maybe we're, we're still forming our opinion on, on these things, you know, like this could be, how do we truly feel about working for someone else? Or how do we truly feel about being an entrepreneur? What are our fears associated with either option? You know, the moon is a very, um, it's such a broad kind of energy. It can be interpreted in so many different ways, but I think the moon is more about connecting to your emotions, to your feels, to your intuition. And I know the past few days you've been getting messages like that. So I think in the week of October 30th, you're really investigating this um, emotional side of things, this intuitive side of things. You're trusting your gut instinct. I love what's coming in for you, okay? Because in the recent past, I think some of you have had a decision or you've been thinking about which way to pivot your money and career sector. You've really got your eyes focused on the nine of pentacles. And I love that the current energy around you in the week of October 30th is of abundance, is of money, is of, you know, where you want to invest your time, energy, resources. It's about abundance. It's about that financial independence. You no longer want to be dependent on somebody for how you feel in the financial sector. Look at her. Like she's so, you know, uh, She's so like comfortable in her, like she's having a great time basically in this card. If you can see, it's a beautiful, beautiful image, the nine of pentacles. And I've been seeing this portal or this gateway in your cards for quite some time. So I also think that a lot of you are stepping into this gateway of abundance. But what the challenge seems to be is the eight of pentacles. Again, this is a very beautiful representation of the eight of pentacles because we see that element of duality it's almost like the chariot it's almost like the high priestess because she's sitting between the two pillars you know so here i feel the challenge is maybe you need a little bit more clarity a little bit more thinking to know which is the right direction for you now that could resonate with some of you for some others i think um the challenge is where you work right now or your current work setup is not taking you to that ninth pentacle the energy around you is inspiring you to get to that ninth pentacle, but somehow you're 
let's say this could be in a very 3D sense, like where you work, your colleagues, your manager or your business partner or the team that you have, the best that you can get to is the eight of pentacles over here. But what has happened is that the universe has inspired that seed in you because what's in your environment is actually the Ten of Pentacles. But I feel this is outside of your current setup. So you need to be a little bit more innovative in terms of how do you jump from the Eight to the Nine and eventually to the Ten and that's what you're after. Because with the Magician here in your hopes and fears, you're showing me that you've been manifesting this abundance. You've been manifesting this sense of financial independence as well. What I absolutely love is that what's hidden from you is a seven of pentacles. More pentacles are hidden from you. So I think your gut instinct, this high priestess who's going to come in either this week or, or in, in the following week, I think she is going to guide you. Okay. And tarot is gender neutral. I'm just saying she, because there's a woman here on the high priestess, but it is a feminine energy, the high priestess. It's very connected to the moon. It's very connected to you know, sometimes the mind plays tricks um, on us, right? And it's about being able to see through all of that and really trust what your soul path is asking you to do versus what maybe society or external or very, uh, um, how do I say this, very like impulses based on social conditioning. She's asking you to go deeper, go beyond that. Your strengths are that you're, you're honestly, you're, you're running into some kind of success with the chariot. That is 100% for sure, because the chariot is a very opportune card for material success. It's a, it's a card of, you know, it kind of closes out the material first seven major arcanas of the tarot. So it's kind of like saying that you've, you've done it, Capricorn, you've done it. Like whatever you could achieve in this path that you've been walking on, you've achieved. And that's your strength, that you have the sense of confidence, that you know how to get things done and you know how to get there. But somehow your eyes are now eyeing another prize, right? Like if you see, she's got her back to this part of the spread. So this is all now done, been there, done that. But she's eyeing something new, which the high priestess is kind of guiding her. And this is that 10 of pentacles that you've been manifesting. And the potential outcome is beautiful with the ace of wands. So there is that spark of inspiration like the universe plants this seed with this ace of wands and look at your likely outcome the page of wands so the seed is then grabbed by someone or this wand is then grabbed by someone and then you run with this idea so there's a there's a progression here from the ace of wands to the page of wands because ace of wands can literally be just an idea like you're thinking you're brainstorming with your team and you get this amazing idea but you need to grab the idea and work on it and flesh it out and actually bring it into the world. And that is what the page of wands is here to help you. So that's amazing. Your potential is the ace of wands and the likely outcome is you actually grab that potential and you run with it and you start to think about what you can create with this beautiful ace of wands. Love this for you. I think this is a very important week for ideation, for inspiration, for brainstorming for also brainstorming at a very spiritual level, at a very soul level, if that makes sense. As in, yes, of course, I mean, you know, if you're brainstorming with your business partner, with your team at work, of course, by all means do that. But I think also if you can ask people to go deeper and connect to their divine purpose or what gets them excited about work or what, let's say if you're leading a team and you're doing sort of like a visioning kind of exercise and where you want to pivot the business for the next like five years, really like make them go deep, make them connect to what is their individual purpose and how do they connect that with what they're trying to build at work. Because I think with this beautiful high priestess, with the moon being here, with magician and the 10 of pentacles being in your environment, I think like you can unlock so much provided people follow their gut and their intuition. So let's get you a few clarifiers. Okay, and then we'll go into the oracles. But uh, wow, loving this weekly read for you, Capricorn. Firstly, I want to see why is the Eight of Pentacles the challenge? Why is the Eight of Pentacles the challenge? Yeah, Seven of Wands. Uh, let's get you some more. There's a Knight of Cups and there is the Nine of Pentacles, which is right behind the Eight of Pentacles. I think you have some great ideas, but I think you're working with people or energies that don't quite appreciate it and maybe are fighting it off like the Seven of Wands does. Like you've got an idea, you want to bring it with the Knight of Cups, like, you know, you're maybe discussing it, but somebody is very defensive and pushing it away. 
And look at that. Like, and even though the Knight of Pentacles is such a beautiful energy in the tarot, but in this deck, she doesn't look very happy. And I've always noticed that about this deck. So, and you have the beautiful Nine of Pentacles, which I did show to you a little bit earlier, where she does look very serene, very liberated, comfortable in her own skin, doing what she wants to do. So I think the challenge right now is that you can dream this vision, you can see where you want to be, but unfortunately, maybe you don't have the right support system around you or the right people or the right teams or the right resources to bring it to reality. That's what I'm picking up on. Um, what's the chariot in your strengths? Because, you know, you have this beautiful chariot card as your strength. So chariot can trump all of these cards because these are minor arcanas, energies that, you know, that don't last for more than a few days. While the chariot, the magician, the high priestess, the moon, these are big energies that usually, uh, depending on, you know, how you read the tarot, but I think they're largely outside of our control. So the best thing we can do is get more information about them and then work with it. Okay, what's the chariot here in your strengths position? Wow, you have the four of wands, really nice. You have the king of cups from the night you uh, jumped to the king of cups and you have the six of swords. Your, your strengths is that, you know, your strengths are that basically you know what you're trying to build. You know the kind of stability you're trying to bring into you your life with the four of wands and you're emotionally mature and I think that emotional maturity is going to see you through a difficult time and take you through calmer waters because that's what the six of swords does that is your strength so even though you've been through a lot you're keeping a cool head you know how to go through this you know how to navigate this difficult time right now beautiful what's the ten of pentacles in your environment you have the eight of pentacles wow see the same cards keep showing up the six of wands okay you have two cards for success here six of wands in the chariot and of connected to the eight it really means like it's connected to your work and the six of coins oh my god you've pulled two sixes in your environment that's a very opportune uh thing in a, in a money and career reading and again you have the ten of cups wow immense happiness abundance everything that you've been hoping and dreaming for coming through you have some really, really positive energies to work with right now, Capricorn, in the week of October 30th. And I would want you to pay attention to this because when it comes to work, there's victory sort of guaranteed, there's success guaranteed with the Six of Coins, the Six of Wands, you chariot as your strength. You have the Ten of Cups. It's going to make you feel really happy. So these naysayers or whether these are energies, whether these are people, whether these are mindsets or ways of thinking, I think you have it in you to overpower all of these and get your chariot back on track towards success, towards your North Star. And the, what they're showing me is that 10 of Pentacles with all these success cards are in your environment. So you are going to be successful. Um, Capricorn, do not worry about that one bit. What's the potential outcome with the Ace of Wands? I wanna see a little bit more on the Ace of Wands. Oh, okay. You have the nine of wands adding up to the ten of wands. You can finally close out a cycle. You have the two of cups meeting your higher self. You guys pull the two of cups quite a bit in your money and career readings. And you have the seven of cups. Look at how many cup cards have shown up and wands. So I think something that has left you feeling exhausted and tired, you will finally be able to drop your burdens and feel a lot lighter in your energy. And I think your heart is, again, starting to make room in your life, which is amazing because I think your guided messages the last few days have been this, that sink into the fields, connect to your heart chakra. What does your heart say about where you're at in your money and career? Because, you know, a lot of us associate um, career, money, growth, abundance with very practical energy or more cognitive or cerebral energy. But if you really think about it, like, we're, we're, we're human beings, right? We're made up of the emotions. We're made up of the cognition. Everything comes together, right? So when we make decisions that are only from one part of us or one aspect of us, which is the practicality, you know, the rationality, the logical brain, then we're making basically a decision that only works for, well, to put it very, very simply, half of us, right? But what we, successful decisions are those that bring you know, the whole self to the discussion table. Let's put it like that. So uh, an intelligent decision would be that, you know, it makes sense, it's logical, and also your heart is invested in it. 
that you feel that sense of attachment to what you're doing at work. You are invested at an emotional level at work. So many of us, you know, and this is something that I've struggled with for many, many, many years, and I'm very comfortable sharing it, that, you know, I've always, because of the way I was raised and everything and the society that I was raised in, it was always about building that financial stability and security and making sure, you know, you have money saved away for a rainy day and all of that. And I think I did that so much in my 20s, just making sure that I ticked the boxes and, you know, got the promotions, worked for the right companies, went to business school, did all of that. And then found myself in my early 30s being like, whoa, I don't feel connected to my career one bit. Like somebody could just rip it apart and take it away from me. And I would actually kind of be like, okay, I'm so grateful that you did that for me. Like I needed an external force. I was almost, and that time I wasn't like into tarot. I wasn't immersed into this, you know, gift. And, and like basically what I was saying to the universe was send me a tower moment crash it down so that, you know, finally I can get some kind of, but I was still waiting for an external validation that somebody else should come in and crash this life of mine so I can get the strength to build again. But that was because, you know, I wasn't very mature in my spiritual development and my inner work and all of that, right? Now, I mean, um, I feel even though like some facets of my work life still remain the same, but I bring a very different emotional uh, conversation to the table. Now I think I'm very clear that, you know, this is uh, what truly fuels my soul, you know, doing this kind of work that helps other people, connecting to energies that perhaps are not so obvious in the 3D world. Because I've always been a very intuitive person. I've always kind of read between the lines really quickly. And when I was a kid or I was a young person, I thought, oh, that's how everybody operates. And that's very natural. But only as I got older, I realized that I should double down on this. I should examine this because apparently it's not so common to just get these intuitive hits and, and know something very clearly as if somebody's implanted this cosmic download into your head and you are not aware of it. So sorry, I'm, go I'm digressing a little bit, but essentially what I'm saying is the minute I got my heart involved in what makes me money as well, my life changed, you know, like better experiences started to show up, more supportive energies started to show up in my, in, even in, you know, in, in like the corporate side of my career and things like that. Like, even though we don't associate that part of life, but I started to attract companies, managers, people, colleagues who were very um, values led, who also kind of started to have similar conversations with me at work. But anyway, I mean, uh, that's a story for another day, but I just think that what spirit, it just reminded me of the journey that I went through, you know, where I used to be all like, oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to let my heart into this conversation. I'm not supposed to look like weak or like vulnerable, or I'm not supposed to like let my manager know that this makes me feel a certain way. But the minute I corrected that in my 30s, and I started to show up for myself and for my emotions, my world changed. And that's exactly what the magician always tells us that you manifest who you are. So when I started to show up that way, those kind of people started to enter into my life. Those kind of conversations started to filter in. In my 20s, those conversations didn't exist because I was trying to live somebody else's life. I was told that this is, I got the memo and this is the mold in which, you know, you put yourself in and then you make money and then you save money and then, you know, like you build assets and blah, 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 blah. And it was, I still remember feeling like when I turned 30, that this is so weird. I, I don't think life is supposed to feel this way. And because I'm a Scorpio sun, and because I've always um, appreciated the gift of emotions, even though I've, I hid it for many years at work, um, I knew that something was off. So I'm kind of recognizing that kind of transformation for some of you. It won't resonate for everyone as this is a general greeting. But if you're going through some of that, you know, the soul stirrings, you wake up in the morning and the universe or your spirit team is trying to guide you, you're getting messages, you need to bring your heart into the conversation. It'll be scary at first, but in the long run, you'll be better for it. Okay, <laughs> so sorry, that was a, a bit of a digression from your reading, but uh, it just really reminded me of that. It connected to me. It connected with me on that level when I was going through that transformation. And look, I mean, I'm not fully done. Of course, I still have my moments. Uh, nobody's ever done, right? Like this work is ongoing. We're on a journey. 
Uh, so now, you know, the nudges are of a different shape and form, but the nudges are still there, right? So, okay. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Okay, some card wanted to show itself. Oh my God. Oh my God, the tower. I have goosebumps, really, I do, because I was just talking about how I was asking the universe for a tower moment, and the card that they gave you is the tower. Oh my God. So there was a reason that I was supposed to go into my uh, long story and tell you a little bit about my journey was because I think some of you right now are where I was in my 20s, waiting for the universe to crash it down, asking for a tower moment without knowing that that is what I was asking for. So hopefully this reading is helping you kind of see where the universe wants you to go. The universe wants you to now get real with yourself, connect, do what makes sense to you. Let the chariot be your own North Star. You know, I feel with the magician, with the chariot, with the moon, with the high priestess, listen to that gut instinct of yours. It's not going to lead you astray. This is the thing. A lot of people think that, oh, if I listen to my gut, I'm going to take a wrong decision. No, your gut is your residual knowledge. It's all your experiences, whatever age you are, in your entire lifetime, all your experiences shaped up in a way that gives you that ammunition, that in, a, in an uncertain environment, your gut helps you decode it. So listen to it. I really think that we need to change the narrative on uh, instinct and gut in, in our world because it really gets, uh, it doesn't get enough of a, a good playback, if I can put it like that. So let's just switch gears. I want to go to a few oracles, okay? I'm getting called to the wisdom of the oracle. Let's see what they have for you. What would you like Capricorn to see when it comes to money and career for the week of October 30th, 2023? Round and round. You know, it's so funny. I wish I'd called it out. But while I was just about to like pull out the card, I was like, this feels like a very round and round kind of energy. Oh my God, because you showed me the tower. So I was getting this feeling that you guys, some of you are in a cycle, in a loop that you need to come out of. And I think you're very, very conscious of it. So good on you. I think you're getting that awakening that this feels familiar. This feels too familiar. I need to come out of it. This is now getting into a loop. That's what I'm picking up on. Oh, wow, look at that. I shuffled the Seven of Pentacles. So maybe there's a joint message on the Seven of Pentacles and here and now. Just focus on the here and now. Um, and I think some of you have been living too much in the past, too much in the future. Spirit wants you to focus on the here and now. This was card number 25. This is card number 32. I know some of you uh, get signs from numbers. Oh, I love this. This is one of my favorite cards, by the way, in this deck, Surrender Pity. Oh my God, I really feel like this is reminding me of the surrender card that you got in one of your dailies recently. The minute you come out of this loop, I feel and the minute like some of you, you know, like uh, the 20 year old me, uh, when you want to start to like bring your heart into that equation and you come out of that cycle, I feel something really amazing opens up for you with the surrender pity because this I've been seeing in your energy for very, very long. You know, I've been reading for Capricorn um, at a very high frequency uh, for the last few months, I would say. And I think I've been seeing the surrender pity, but now I'm kind of getting the clue that for some of you, this exists around you for you to grab and capitalize on this opportunity. But I think you need a little bit of um, figuring out what your relationship with this opportunity, this 10 of pentacles, this magician, and this ace of wands that the universe has been showing up for you for quite some time. What is your relationship with this Ace of Wands? Is it purely tactile at a cognitive level or is it also that your heart is invested in this way of working and in this way of manifesting success and abundance? Um, so that's what I'm getting from these cards. You have not for you. There is something that you need to turn your back on because not everything is for us, right? Otherwise, what's the, what's the fun of it? If everybody has to go through the same experiences, there are some things that are for you and there are some things that are not for you, Capricorn. You need to figure out the difference between the two is what Spirit is saying. What is your advice for Capricorn? What is your advice for Capricorn? Oh my God, they've flipped over the High Priestess, the Three of Wands, the Six of Wands, the Knight of Wands. Wow, that's a lot of fire energy coming through. Um, but the High Priestess seems to be your clue card. And then again, you've got the Six of Wands twice now in your reading. So I have the Six of Wands here, I have the Six of Wands here. I have the Three of Wands expanding. Three of Wands is about opening up to newer possibilities, newer horizons. Like you're waiting for your ships to come and your ships have come in like the Knight of Wands. It's coming in really fast. I think there's very fast moving energy around you, Capricorn. 
this week you'll feel like maybe a lot is coming at you maybe a lot of people want to reach out to you a lot of communication i would say just remember that chariot energy remember what is connected to your north star what makes sense to you and everything else is white noise everything else is just noise capricorn is what they're telling me to tell you let's close out your reading with a few angel answers and you know that this deck has a yes or no card so if you have a question on your mind it's a good idea to pause the video take a deep breath think about your question and then if i happen to pull a yes or no card that will be a direct response from spirit to your question okay three cards please and i close my eyes when i pull cards out of this deck because i don't want to be biased by the colors of the cards okay i think something has turned over oh my god oh my god success yes the situation will improve Ooh, and they just the way they came out was amazing while i was explaining to you my whole methodology of closing my eyes and pulling out cards they were like okay okay we don't need to get there we're just gonna give you the cards i love this for you capricorn the situation will improve hang in there the universe gives you a big yes i think one of your dailies was titled that here is your yes card again and success like i've been telling you it's guaranteed you have two six of wands you have the chariot card you have this beautiful ace of wands with some good news page of wands you bring it into reality i'm so proud of you capricorn i know it's not been easy you've walked a difficult path to get to where you are today but you're almost there or you are here look at this the situation will improve just hang in there success is going to be yours love this for you capricorn if this video helped you please do hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel take care bye bye